بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو سالار خان یوٹیوب چینل وی ایٹ ٹوڈے یو سین بائی دا ہیڈنگ آف دا ویڈیو وی اسٹارٹ اے نیو ٹاپک اینڈ دیٹ از آف گیس انسولیشن اکارڈنگ ٹو دا کائنیٹنگ مالیکولر تھیوری گیسز ہیو نو فکس اسٹرکچر اینڈ آر فری ٹو موو ان اے رینڈم فیشن رائٹ اے نمبر آف گیسز آر یوزڈ as insulation in high voltage applications. Air is the most common insulation. SF6, you have heard the name more commonly as well in circuit breakers. So, before applying an insulation to any equipment, you should know the working of the equipment as well as the as well as about the insulation the breakdown process of the insulation right yes for any gas to be used as an insulation it must obey certain properties it must have certain characteristic features to in this video we just discuss them i give the heading is of gas insulation this is our new topic we will be discussing it for a couple of videos now and in this what we will discuss today are the characteristic features that any gas must have in order to be used as a gas insulation so number one of course it must have a high dielectric strength we are using it for the purpose of dielectric strength so the higher the dielectric strength the good the insulation is gases roughly have got a dielectric strength of a few kilovolts per centimeter to a maximum of 0.1 megavolt per centimeter which is 100 kilovolt per centimeter this is roughly for gases air has got what air has got a dielectric strength of 21.1 kilovolt per centimeter rms value and uh, uh, the peak value is 30 kilovolt per centimeter with a relative permittivity of 1 this is a free space right not about this air but let's not debate on free space and air whatever it is these are the values how is this dielectric strength calculated so you know this from the basics of high voltage that uh, you have a two electrode structure you apply a voltage to it and you increase the voltage at a certain rate the positive is anode the negative is cathode and once you see the arc at a voltage the voltage at which you see the arc is called the breakover voltage so the dielectric strength then is equal to the breakover voltage and divided by divided by what divided by the distance d what is that distance d that distance d is the distance between the two electrodes this gives you the dielectric strength right so it must have a high dielectric strength number 2 it must be chemically stable it must be chemically stable which means what that it should not lose its chemical properties upon the application of temperature and pressure when you apply temperature and pressure you've seen this in the basic chemistry that the uh, 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 that the properties change so it must be so resistant that in the working temperatures and in the working pressures it must be chemically stable which means what that if it's oxygen it should remain oxygen if it's sf6 it should remain sf6 it should not lose its chemical properties thermally stable i can write thermally stable well basically these two would be the same because chemical stability is caused by temperature and pressure mainly but let's say 
if I talk about it separately. So with the increase of temperature, the molecular motion further increases, causing more instability. And you could I say it like this, that if it's a molecular gas, it should not dissociate. SF6 is a good insulation, but when it dissociates, that is then toxic and that's not good. So I will write over here that, that this should be non-toxic. Because you've got the maintenance stuff, you've got working uh, conditions, working stuff over there, circuit breaker, wherever it is used, so it should be non-toxic. And it's not only about human beings, it's about the natural habitat as well. So it should be non-toxic and environmental friendly at the same time. Because we've got animals, we've got trees. So it should be environmental friendly as well now i told you sf6 is a gas which is non-toxic it is a, 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 a good example of a gas insulation most commonly used but when it dissociates it forms a fluorine gas and sf2 ion the negative ion formation is good we'll see in the upcoming videos but they are then toxic so that is not good what do you have is you should introduce some smell in the gas insulation so that in, in, in case of leakage you know about it. For example, there are certain gases that have no smell. For example, you take the most common carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a very toxic gas and, and it does not have a smell and it brings about what dizziness on you. You have experienced it in cars. The windows are closed and you are driving for a long time. You, you feel dizziness and that is it. Right? So, I will write it over here. Introduce some smell. It must have some, some odor or smell for, for what purpose? For safety purpose. Right? Yes. What do I have more? Let's say uh, chemically and thermally stable is done, non-toxic. It must be non-corrosive. It must be non-corrosive. Air is a very common insulation, but you know what? Corrosion it can cause. What is required for corrosion? For corrosion, you require two things. Number one is moisture and number two is oxygen. Wherever these two things would be present, there will be corrosion. So you must use such a gas that does not cause corrosion because the metal contacts of the circuit breaker would corrode and you will be losing efficiency right so it must be non-corrosive by the way what's the difference between corrosion and erosion yes corrosion is a chemical process uh, uh, which is the formation of oxides of the metal whereas erosion is a physical process the physical eating away of the metal next property it should be non-flammable it should be non-flammable now I don't know the difference, uh, what do we say, flammable, non-flammable or inflammable, what is this basically, but the thing is that it should not ignite, the ignition temperature should not be low. Oxygen is inflammable or what do we call it, non-flammable, <laughs> the thing that does not burn because this is oxygen around me so it is not burning, although it helps in burning, it helps in burning but it does not burn itself right so it should be non-flammable why because in the environment if you had somebody lights a cigarette and everything will burn the a whole universe so the thing is it should be oxygen is non-flammable and the gas used in the in the in the insulation should be non-flammable as well so i believe that i don't have any other uh, uh, property left over here and if I see the book, if I see the book, uh, non-corrosive chemical stable does not dissociate. Yes, yes, these are the properties. So in the chemical and thermal stability, if I write that it should not dissociate, I could write it this as well, should not dissociate. And this is in case of a, in case of a molecular gas or it should not form new things in case of atomic species, right? 
So that is chemical and thermal stability, you know this. I can write over here as a non-explosive as well. Because nitrogen sort of a gas that is explosive, so that should not be used again. Well, something related to the dielectric strength, but I can write is a high ionization potential as well. Right? These are one and the same thing, but just, just let me write it. Okay? So, these are the properties that any gas must fulfill in order to be used as an insulation. But one thing, you've heard a word of a trade-off. The thing is you would have to have a little compromise. What do I mean by this? I mean is that there is a gas with a very very high dielectric strength. Very very high. So you would just not directly select it. Why? Because you will later come to know that that gas is toxic. That gas is toxic. So I don't need that. It has a very high dielectric strength, but it is not chemically stable. Once the temperature increases a little, it dissociates. So I don't need it again. Then you see that there is a gas that is very, very corrosion resistant. That does not have any sort of, does not cause any sort of corrosion. But the ionization, the, the, the dielectric strength is low. Or a gas that is very much thermal stable, you increase the temperature to thousands of degrees, it will remain the same stable, but its dielectric strength is low. So, again, I will not use it. Right? So, the thing is, you would see all the essential properties, it must obey all of them. SF6, sulfur hexafluoride, is the most common gases insulation used nowadays, having these properties. These are the essential properties that any gas must obey. From the next videos, we start discussing the breakdown mechanism to understand the application or to apply this. First, you need to know the basic breakdown mechanism. What causes the insulation failure? What causes its breakdown? So, only then we will be able to understand it fully. So, see you from the next video with the breakdown mechanism of gaseous insulations. Till then, take care of yourself, everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers. Do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.